Is there any armored vehicle that can drive over a TM mine and not blow up? Today, we're reviewing the Viking, used by Ukraine's 38th Marine Brigade. This unit is called the BVS Viking 10. It's an infantry fighting vehicle, amphibious. It consists of two sections. The front holds the driver, commander, and gunner. The rear is for troops. The front part, engine, transmission, and drive system, weighs 5 tons. The rear weighs about 3.5 tons. It's mainly used to drop off troops and then pull them out. Armor is rated at level 4. What does that stop? Shrapnel, and it'll definitely stop 7.62 mm rounds. Has it taken fire before? There have been blasts, close but not direct hits, maybe a meter or two away. That can cause concussions. That includes the driver and gunner too. Minor concussions, but no life-threatening injuries. Vikings have been produced since 2006. This one came to Ukraine in 2023. What's the crew size? Driver, gunner, and commander. Three people. Plus, two more seats in the back. Could be for a medic or whoever you need. But the core crew is three. Is the engine in the front? Yep, up front. What kind of engine? Turbo diesel, inline six. Six to seven liters. Automatic transmission. Six forward gears, one reverse. What's its top land speed? On a highway, 70 kilometers per hour. You've really driven it that fast? Even hit 75. Push the speedo to the max. What can I say? This Viking really hauls. Looks small, but it's got serious muscle. Drives like a regular car, really easy to handle. I'm used to it like my own personal vehicle. Since it's amphibious, it actually floats? Absolutely. It swims at 5 kilometers per hour. How deep does it sink when in water? About 1.25 meters deep. So that's like up to the windows? Yeah. It swims using its tracks. No extra propeller. The tracks look kind of unusual. They're rubber. Kind of toy-like, honestly. <laughs> nah, rubber with a Kevlar layer. They're wide. Makes mine blasts less likely to go off. Reduces the chance of a detonation. Weights more spread out, which helps if you roll over a mine. Unlike the narrow tracks on BTRs or Motolihas, which concentrate the pressure. Here, the weight's distributed more evenly, less risk of triggering the mine. So has that happened? Yeah, once we did hit a mine head-on. The driver's legs got injured a bit, but no fatalities. That's thanks to the V-shaped capsule hull and double-layered armor in the crew compartment. You can't repair the tracks, they just get replaced. Power is sent to the rear section through a drive shaft. It's all-wheel drive. So both front and rear tracks are powered? Exactly. But all this is exposed, no casing or protection. Why is that? Well, when the vehicle turns, the two halves flex, 
one way than the other. It's a moving joint. If it were rigid, sure, you could add armor, but it has to move constantly. And when it's in the water, those cylinders adjust the vehicle's tilt. Horizontally and vertically? Exactly. But couldn't they make a rubber cover for that? They could have. But clearly, the designers didn't think of that. Seems like a weak point to me. Debris could get in there or something could break it, right? Yeah, it's definitely a vulnerability. But the sections are only connected by cylinders. So if one gets damaged or flips, the other can still stand on its tracks as normal. Wait, so it can twist and flip around? Yep. And the vehicle keeps going. Just rotate it back into place. Nothing breaks. Just pick it up and reset it? Yeah. And it weighs how much again? Three and a half tons. So, no, you're not lifting it by hand. You'll need gear for that. And what's in that rear part? What's it for? It's for carrying personnel, an assault squad heading to or returning from a mission. And the back? Hatch or doors? Doors. Big ones, easy to use. When troops are in full gear, armor, packs, rifles, or machine guns, they can still load in and out easily. Quick in, quick out. Any advice for infantry who are riding this to the front? What are they doing right or wrong? It's 2.2 meters wide, 7.6 meters long. That's almost eight meters, pretty long. Drivers need to factor in the turning radius. That's critical, especially if the area is mined. You can't just spin this thing around on the spot. You'll need to back and forth or have room to maneuver. How long does a full turn take? A minute or two, then you're headed back. During that time, the gunner is covering the vehicle, and the driver gives audible signals to the rear compartment. There's an indicator light. If it's on, the rear doors are open. You don't need to get out and check. Sensors tell you everything. Once the light's on, that means troops are dismounting. Another signal might mean wounded are being loaded, or it's a personnel swap at the line. Once they're inside, doors close, light goes off. One click, locked. Now we unlock, and the turret rotates. Gunner's good to go. It fully rotates, 180 degrees. Is it manual? Manual. Just grab the lever, turn it left or right. On most vehicles like this, the turret's not very protected. The armor's low, and if you're firing, your head's usually sticking out. That's true, but hey, it's still something. Your head? I mean the armor. At least it's there. It gives you some cover. And that's how the Viking works in Ukraine's 38th Marine Brigade. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got plenty more coming.
And if you've got an idea for a topic you'd like to see, drop it in the comments. We'll be picking the top suggestions based on your likes. 